Hi team, and welcome to another video in the Astrological Magical Elections video series. In this video, we're going to cover magical electional opportunities available to us from the Scorpio New Moon on October 27th until the Taurus Full Moon on November 12th. So unfortunately, the skies are pretty quiet this two-week period, and there aren't a whole lot of astrological electional opportunities available for us. A lot of it has to do with just the aspects that the moon makes this this period, and it's really unfortunate because the moon is waxing, and we would generally utilize this time for elections or talismans that are more focused on growth and increase, and unfortunately just everything that we have coming up is ruined one way or another by some planet. In my last video, I made a comment about the proper setup for fixed star talismans, which focus on the conjunction of the moon instead of the sextile or trine. Generally, you don't want the aspect. And I got a lot of questions about that uh, in regards to elaborating it, because it is uh, something that Agrippa says, which is why I included the hashtag Agrippa Shade uh, as a visual joke for that segment. And I was going to talk about that more and just elaborate on it to get more information out there, but I actually had an idea just to dedicate an entire video to fixed stars uh, and their applications in astrology and magic. So please look out for that full video coming out at a later date. At this time, I'll just kind of offer a short answer, and that shorter answer is basically just that um, aspects to fixed stars aren't typically utilized at any other time within traditional astrology. So it's kind of an outlier and something that I'm very skeptical about. So that's the short answer. But before we move into our uh, astrological magical opportunities for this two-week period, I want to take a quick second to touch up and check in on where the planets are and what they're doing at this time. So um, there's not a whole lot going on right now. We do have Jupiter in Sagittarius and Saturn in Capricorn, and while that generally would be highly conducive to really powerful, really good um, planetary talismans for those two planets, as we'll see, we don't really have opportunities for it this two-week period, and that's kind of unfortunate because Jupiter in Sagittarius is almost over. Kind of on the opposite end of that spectrum, we have Mars in Libra, which is a sign of detriment, so we're not going to do anything uh, with Mars, and it's actually really kind of an unfortunate configuration because both malefic planets, Saturn and Mars, are in the cardinal signs. So Libra, Aries, Capricorn, and Cancer are effectively cancelled. Um, that goes with, that's one of the main reasons why we haven't had, say, like a Sirius or Procyon fixed star talisman, because they are sit within the sign of Cancer, so they get the Saturn opposition, um, and why we don't have like a good Spica or Algorab election, um, because Mars kind of ruins it being in Libra. During this period, uh, the moon won't be in Cancer, her sign of domicile, uh, but she will be in Taurus, but unfortunately that will be the full moon, so we can't do anything with the full moon uh, in Taurus. We have Mercury stationing retrograde on October 30th. Uh, so all kinds of Mercury magic is going to be canceled during this period. And uh, uh, condolences for everybody going through a Mercury perfection year at this time. And then Venus will ingress into Sagittarius, which is great for her because she'll be leaving her sign of detriment to do that. Um, and then the Sun will also be entering into Scorpio during this time, uh, leaving behind his sign of fall. So we have a little bit of a dignity push uh, where we have two planets leaving their signs of debility for more neutral signs. Uh, while Saturn and Jupiter remain in their signs of domicile. So really our one and only talismanic electional opportunity for this entire two-week period is on Halloween morning, and here we have the potential for a Jupiter planetary talisman, which is really great uh, because Jupiter's been retrograde for such a long time this summer, and now we kind of get to, to mess around with him a little bit more before he moves out of Sagittarius later this winter. So unfortunately, this isn't going to be something that everybody gets to take advantage of. This is primarily going to be something available to Western Europe um, and to the East Coast of the United States, so that chart's going to look a little bit different, so we'll talk about it in a second. But um, here we have October 31st um, uh, is, of course, a Thursday, so the day of Jupiter, and here we have the Moon and Jupiter conjoined um, on the Ascendant, and that's, that's kind of what you're looking for, the Moon to be applying an aspect to the planet that we're looking for, uh, that to be that planet's day or hour, and that planet to be in dignity and in the uh, Ascendant or Midheaven. So that's kind of what we're looking for, and this chart checks all those boxes. Our concern, really, during this period is this Mars, um, which is very angular in the chart on the midheaven, and that's something that could will obviously be woven into the, the chart to some extent, even though the Moon uh, and Jupiter are not afflicted by this Mars, per se. This isn't a square aspect, you know, the Moon is separating a sextile from this Mars. Um, but Mars is applying a sextile to Jupiter simultaneously. So just something to be aware of, there is going to be kind of this Mars energy woven into this, um, but this is kind of going to be, for many of us, our last chance for a Jupiter planetary talisman. So if that's something that you're a little bit more desperate to have and experience before we go a couple of years with Jupiter in Saturn signs, this might be a decent uh, talisman just to kind of play around with. This isn't something that I would recommend as like a surgical piece or anything that's meant to be permanent, just because that Mars energy is very highly emphasized, and that typically isn't something that you want. 
Now for the United States, like I said, this is only going to be something that's really going to be useful for those who live in the East Coast just because of our timing involved. So if you use the previous chart that's set up with the moon and the Jupiter conjoined on the ascendant um, for the east coast of the United States, you're gonna miss it because by the time that Jupiter gets up to the ascendant, the moon will have already separated from his conjunction and so you missed your chance there. So the best that you can really do is something like this, which focuses on kind of an early Sagittarius ascendant um, with the moon still applying to Jupiter because you can see they're super, super close in this, like literally five minutes of arc apart. And that's really what you're focused on, trying to get those two planets angular while also keeping the moon applying to the conjunction of Jupiter, because once she's past it, she's past it, and we can't do anything about it. We've missed it. Um, and for that, we're looking to start anywhere between like 10 o'clock, no later than like 10.25 that morning. Um, after that, we've missed it, and we're and we're done. We kind of have the same issues as the first chart set for, set for uh, Eastern Europe, where you still have kind of this very angular Mars. It's not as angular and as pronounced, um, but it's still like very prominent in the 10th house. So my same kind of concerns would go with this one as well. So unfortunately, that's really our only uh, astrological magical opportunity that's available, and it's not even available for most people in the United States. So that's unfortunate. But all of the lunar mansion talismans aren't available. There aren't any good ones. Um, planetary applications are all messed up. No good fixed star talismans for this period of time either. Um, but I did want to talk a little bit about some almost... Uh, elections that should be discarded or not utilized but that kind of look good just to kind of get more familiarity with that process for viewers so this is on the chart that's going to be kind of an almost election for a Saturn planetary talisman now that we have Saturn and Capricorn who is now direct we have a little bit of room some time to try to plan for Saturn planetary talismans at the same time so here's an example of that obviously you want um, Saturn to be in Capricorn check you want Saturn to be angular in the 10th or first houses. Saturn's in the 10th house, check. You want it to be the day or the hour of Saturn, check. Um, this is the hour of Saturn on a Friday. And you want the moon to be applying to that planet, which is also happening. Um, now, the bad parts of this election, the reason why it should be passed up and not utilized, is that the moon is conjoined the node um, before she gets to Saturn, and that's not okay. And then, of course, something to always that we always have to be aware of is the interaction between the malefic planets and here we have saturn square mars and, uh, when it comes to malefic planets um, they're already kind of more difficult to work with unless you are born with a particular configuration or affinity towards those planets in your natal chart um, but you still want to make sure that they're not hurting or afflicting one another making sure that mars doesn't afflict saturn or that saturn doesn't afflict mars because that will exacerbate the problem um, so this one is an almost example of a Saturn planetary talisman. It's not that great because the moon is afflicted due to her conjunction with the node, which is a severe impediment for the moon specifically. It's not something that I would worry about necessarily with all the other planets, but with the moon, definitely pay attention to it. Um, and then the square with Merc or sorry, the square with Mars that is happening at the same time also makes it non-ideal. So our second example of an almost planetary electional opportunity is actually this one for a Jupiter, a potential Jupiter piece. And when I was initially looking through this two-week period trying to find Lunar Mansion Talismans, I found this time and I was like, oh my gosh, did I miss this Jupiter election opportunity? Like I was really excited about it because um, I just thought that the October 31st one was going to be the last one that we would have. And so I'm looking at this and I was like, oh my God, did I miss this one? What, I, what am I doing? But it ended up being a really great example of this. So it was going to be a 28th Lunar Mansion Talisman that was applying a square to Jupiter. And it was like, oh yeah, this is really good. And um, this can be also a Jupiter planetary election. And so let's talk about that. Um, but I actually found out that that is not the case um, because the moon's not applying a square to Jupiter in this chart. What she's actually doing is applying a trine to Mercury, 22 degrees Pisces to 23 degrees Scorpio, which she'll get to before she gets to 24 degrees Sagittarius. Um, so you definitely, you know, you need the moon to apply to the target planet. So in a Jupiter talisman, you need the moon to apply to Jupiter to have a really good one. Um, so that's not happening here. The moon's applying to Mercury, which isn't, which isn't good. Um, but to make matters worse, Mercury is retrograde, which you absolutely don't want the moon to apply to a retrograde planet at all, um, and also combusted the sun. So those two things, automatic nose, uh, and just kind of be aware that, that this time is coming up, even though it looks really good with the moon on the ascendant, Jupiter on the midheaven, and it's a Thursday this on this day, that moon application to that retrograde combust Mercury totally ruins it. So like, just be careful if uh, you run into anybody who 
points out the selection as something good, it's absolutely not. All right, and that's all I have for you. I told you there wasn't a whole lot going on. Hopefully our waning moon phase after the Taurus full moon provides us with better opportunities and more things to talk about. But for right now, the skies are quiet, so just use this as an opportunity to relax, maybe take stock of what you need for potential future rituals. Thank you so much for watching. Look forward to my fixed star video coming out soon where I talk more about how wrong Agrippa is, and I'll see you guys again on the Taurus full moon.